Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a really little interesting gaming PC that came out a couple years ago. This is known as the Intel NUC Hades Canyon. Now when this was first released, I actually did a video on it. I paid full price out of pocket. I bought one from Amazon and since then I did sell it off. But recently I was looking on eBay and I noticed that the prices on these are actually coming way down. I was able to bid this one out at $608 and I won it. This is actually the i7 version and when these were released they were anywhere from $1000 to $1500. And this one here is bare bones. Unfortunately a couple of the screws on the top cover are missing. I was a little upset about that but I'll find some down the road. I think I still got a pretty decent deal on it. And I have seen these go anywhere from $500 up to $800 used on eBay. You just got to keep your eye out. Now this one also came bare bones, so I do need to add storage and RAM. We have two NVMe SSD slots, and it uses SODEM RAM. I'm going to go with a 1TB Kingston NVMe SSD, nothing fancy here. And when it comes to RAM, I'm going to go with 16GB of DDR4 running at 3200MHz. This will be running in dual channel. Again, nothing fancy here, but this is also branded as Kingston. Since I'm going with a single NVMe drive, I do have the option later on down the road to add another one if I want to max out the storage on this thing, but I think one terabyte should be fine for my use case scenario. So what makes these mini PCs so interesting, at least in my opinion, is the collaboration between AMD and Intel. Like I mentioned, this is using an Intel i7 CPU. It's a Kaby Lake G, 4 cores, 8 threads, up to 4.2 gigahertz. And when it comes to the GPU, it actually has built-in AMD Vega graphics, but they are much more powerful than the Vega graphics you're going to find in the APUs, from the 3000 series up to the 5000 series. And that's because this is actually using the AMD Radeon RX Vega MGH. We have 24 CUs up to 1190 megahertz, and it has a dedicated 4 gigabytes of HBM2 VRAM for that GPU, and it's all built into the chip. As for the CPU side of things, we have the i7-8809G, 4 cores, 8 threads, base clock of 3.1 gigahertz, with a boost up to 4.2. For being such a small form factor PC, it actually has a bunch of I.O. Up front here, we have a full-size SD card slot, USB 3.0, USB 3.1, full-size HDMI, Thunderbolt 3, and a 3.5mm audio jack all up front. Taking a look around back, we have two more Thunderbolt 3 ports, two mini display ports, dual gigabit Ethernet, four USB 3.0 ports, and another full-size HDMI port. I'm going to tell you, you're going to be hard-pressed to find a PC this small with this much I.O. Another cool little feature that they added here is the light up skull on the top, and this is fully adjustable, but you have to adjust it from the BIOS. So let's go ahead and boot this thing up. I've installed Windows on it. I'm actually super excited to get into some testing. And by the way, everything you're going to see running in this video is going to be in the stock configuration. Inside of the BIOS, we do have some overclocking options for the CPU, or while in Windows, you could always use the Intel tuning utility to overclock that CPU a bit, and Afterburner for the GPU. But in this video, we're going to leave it all stock. So for this one here, we're going to run some benchmarks, test out some PC gaming and emulation. I'm going to go ahead and connect this to my game capture so we can get a better look at everything. Alright, so here we are. I've installed Windows 10 Pro on that 1TB SSD. As you can see, we have that 8809G. This is a Kaby Lake G CPU, 4 cores, 8 threads, 16GB of DDR4 running at 3200MHz. And the built-in, at least for this little PC, Radeon RX Vega MGH graphics. Now this does have a dedicated 4 gigabytes of VRAM, and it's actually HBM2 VRAM, so even though this little GPU is built into this PC, it does have its own VRAM, which is actually pretty quick. So when it comes to a mini PC like this, you'll have no issues using this as your main PC. If you want to do some video editing, photo editing, web browsing, 4K video playback, this thing is really quick. We got that AC Wi-Fi built in. It's got Bluetooth 5.0, Gigabit Ethernet. I mean, this is actually a little powerhouse if you were going to use it as your everyday desktop. But, you know, something like this really appeals to gamers who want a small form factor gaming PC. I know it came out a couple years ago, but like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the prices on these are coming way down, and with GPU prices as crazy as they are right now, even for a GTX 1650, something like this might make sense for some people. So the first thing I did with this little machine was run some benchmarks. Let's jump over there now and take a look at those. First up, Geekbench 5, single core, 1081, multi, 4370. I actually thought we'd see a little better single core here, given that it does have that boost up to 4.2 gigahertz, but again, it's an 8th gen Intel. Moving over to some GPU benchmarks, first up we have Night Raid, 24,228, Fire Strike, 8,715, and finally, Time Spy with a 3,056. 
So yeah, it's definitely beaten out the integrated graphics in the newer 5000 series AMD APUs, and I really expected it to, given that we have that mobile RX GPU in here with 4GB of HBM2 VRAM. So the benchmarks aren't looking too bad for what we're working with here, but now it's time to get into some gaming and see how this thing really performs. So first up, we have Back for Blood. This is one I definitely wanted to test. We're at high settings here, 1080p, and I got an average of 83 FPS by the end of my run here. It actually performs really well on this little PC. Next up, we have Dirt 5, and I was a little disappointed by this. I thought we'd get much better performance. I'm actually at 900p medium settings, and I was pretty sure that we'd get at least 60 out of this, but I only averaged 48 FPS by the end of this. Now, to get this up past 60, you'd have to go to low with a very low mix, 900p, and it would do it, but personally, I just wanted to leave it at medium and see what it did. Doom Eternal actually did really well here. We got an average of 76 FPS with a high medium setting, and I gotta say, most of these are at high. We're at 1080p, and it's looking great. Here's GTA 5, 1080p, high settings. We got an average of 93 FPS. I actually thought we'd get a little more out of it given that we're only at high settings. You could probably manage locking this with V-Sync on at 60 and going up to very high with it and run it at 60 all day. Here's Cyberpunk 2077. This is another one that's really going to struggle with this setup here. We're at 900p, low settings. Crowd density is set to medium. We got an average of 39 FPS, and even at 720p, low settings with crowd density to low, we only average 53. We can't hit 60 with this setup. And when it comes to fighting games on this little setup, it does a great job. I also tested Street Fighter V at Ultra Settings. We got 60, 1080p, so if you did want to play Mortal Kombat, Injustice 2, or even Killer Instinct on this at high settings, you shouldn't have any issues. And before we move over to some emulation testing, the last PC game I wanted to test here was Call of Duty Warzone. It does really well, 1080p, we got a normal high mix here, and I probably should have just kept everything at normal. But by the end of this here, we got an average of 73 FPS. It's definitely playable on this machine. Now going into this, I figured that emulation would still work really well on this little setup, and here we have PS2 using PCSX2, Ratchet & Clank Up Your Arsenal, DirectX 11 back in at 1440p. It works great, and I think that this game could probably go up to 4K. There might be some games that'll only do up to 1080, like uh, Gran Turismo 4. You might be able to pull off 1440 with that, but overall PS2 emulation works great on this thing. Moving over to some Wii U emulation using the SimU emulator, Vulcan back in, 1080p, we're locked at 30 with Breath of the Wild. As you can see, it's handling it no problem at all. Now another thing I tried was running this at 1080p 60, unfortunately we're only around 52 FPS like that. If you want 60 out of it, you will have to drop this down to 720p, but it will run. And the final thing I wanted to test here was some PS3 emulation using RPCS3. We have Skate 3, 720p, Vulcan back in. It seems to be running pretty well, but every once in a while I do notice some dips. I've seen it go as low as 56, and to tell you the truth, if I didn't have that frame counter on, it's just for a split second, I would probably never notice it. Taking a look at total system power consumption from the wall using a kilowatt meter. I idle, it's a little higher than I'd like with these smaller PCs, but it's only 28 watts. While gaming, we averaged 167 watts, and the maximum that I could get this to pull from the wall with all four cores, eight threads, and that GPU maxed out was 221 watts. And remember, this comes with that 230 watt power supply, so we're good to go here. But keep in mind, this was in the stock configuration, and with this little setup here, there are ways to overclock the GPU and the CPU with this mini PC, so it can pull more. 
Some of you might have noticed those high CPU temps while gaming, and inside of the BIOS you can totally adjust this fan curve, plus there's some pre-made settings like quiet, standard, performance, and full on. In performance mode, I find that this does get really loud, I mean it gets too loud even for me. And when it's set to full on, it just sounds like a jet engine. So I'm set to standard, and my average CPU temps here were as follows. Idle, 40 degrees Celsius. While gaming, we averaged 87, but as you saw, some of those games did go up higher. This is the average between the games I tested and emulation. And the maximum temperature I saw from this mini PC was 102 degrees Celsius while running Cinebench R23. About 4 minutes into the test, which is a 10 minute test, it did hit thermal throttle. So overall, I think it performed really well, and one thing I should mention is this PC was released in 2018. I personally didn't go through and change the thermal paste on that CPU cooler. That could definitely help out by a few degrees, but running this in performance mode is definitely the way to go to keep those CPU temps down. It's definitely still one of the best performing mini PCs in this form factor that I've ever tested on the channel, and the price on these are coming down. I picked this one up, which is the i7 version for $608 shipped on eBay. I did have to bid it out, and I also had to add my own RAM and storage, but getting a mini PC that can game this well for around $700 after you add everything is still a pretty decent deal. I mean, when you go small form factor, it does get much more expensive. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in checking these out on eBay, we'll leave a few links in the description. And if there's anything else you want to see running on the Hades Canyon, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.